tonight on The Readout. This is some third world bull right here. Let me say it again, third world bull FBI right now is the Gestapo. Make no mistake, if you're associated with Donald Trump in any way, you better cross all your I's and dot all your T's because they're coming for you. Despite the freak out from the right, there are serious legal ramifications for Trump as we're learning more about yesterday's FBI search. But what consequences there will be for the dark MAGA forces threatening violence on social media, some not even bothering to disguise their identities. And why should not why you should not buy into the hype that the FBI search at Mar-a-Lago is somehow unprecedented. Good evening. I'm Jason Johnson in for Joy Reid, and we begin tonight 24 hours after perhaps the biggest story in the history of the American presidency. That for the first time in history, the FBI conducted a search at the home of a former president, that of Donald Trump. We have learned a lot more about what went down in his Mar-a-Lago residence. But there are still a lot of unanswered questions. A source familiar with the matter tells NBC News that the search was tied to classified information Trump allegedly took with him when he left the White House. Remember back in February, the National Archives asked the Justice Department to investigate if Trump's handling of White House records violated federal law. It came a month after the archives retrieved 15 boxes of presidential records taken at Mar-a-Lago. NBC News has also learned that the FBI notified Trump's Secret Service detail guarding the property in advance and presented their warrant from a judge permitting them to enter. White House officials tell NBC News they had no prior knowledge of the search and Justice Department officials are refusing to comment. Trump was not at Mar-a-Lago at the time. He's been staying at his New Jersey golf club in Bedminster, where he is meeting tonight with a group of House Republicans. Trump's own lawyer has confirmed that the FBI, quote, Seize paper from Mar-a-Lago. What those papers may include is still unclear, though members of the Trump family are trying to downplay what might have been found at Trump's Florida home. My father always kept clippings, um, you know, press clippings. He would have, you know, newspaper articles, pictures, notes from us. Uh, when my mom passed away a couple weeks ago, you know, he still had all the the notes, uh, you know, over the years had been saved, all the notes that she had ever written him. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. My father saves clippings and things like that. So he had, he had boxes, right, when he moved out of the White House. My father-in-law, as anybody knows who's been around him a lot, loves to save things like newspaper clippings, magazine clippings, uh, photographs, documents that he had every authority will to take from the White House. Yeah, now, I am past the law, I am past the bar, but I know a little bit, enough to know the FBI can't illegally search Trump's residence without good reason. The decision to seek the warrant would be heavily scrutinized at the DOJ. Then a federal judge would need to be convinced that not only is there probable cause that a crime was committed, but that there was actual evidence of the crime at the location to be searched. According to Dave Ehrenberg, the state attorney for Palm Beach County, where Mar-a-Lago resides, what we saw yesterday was likely about a lot more than just newspaper clippings. This search warrant, in my mind, would never have been issued if it was merely about removing government documents, if it was merely about that Trump kept keepsakes from Kim Jong-un. This most likely, in my mind, involved a willful removal or destruction of classified documents that could jeopardize national security. Joining me now is Jessica Levinson, professor at Loyola Law School, Paul Butler, professor at Georgetown Law School, and a former federal prosecutor, and Daniel Goldman, candidate for New York's 10th Congressional District. He is also a former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York and the former lead counsel for Trump's impeachment trial. Thank you all so much for joining me this evening. Uh, this is going to be quite the night. Um, Daniel, I'll start with you. We've just gotten word that not only, of course, was there the raid yesterday, but that it had nothing to do with the January 6th impeachment, nothing to do with the attack one way or another. But is there a possibility, from your experience and your knowledge, that what was discovered there could end up in the hands of the January 6th committee or in another division at the DOJ if it ends up being helpful? Yeah, it's definitely possible that um, some of the materials could be relevant. But my guess is that they had very specific evidence uh, related to 
some important documents that were in Mar-a-Lago and that Trump was not coughing up. You can be sure this was not press clippings or magazine photos or keepsakes. That is absolutely not what would lead a judge to authorize a search warrant. So uh, if it's I, I think we all suspected it related to the classified documents. But I think it's really important to understand that the Donald Trump and his lawyers were in regular discussions, both with the FBI and with the National Archives up through June. And then they issue a search warrant. And that would only come about because there was no other way that they could be certain to get the materials that they uncovered were in the Mar-a-Lago residence. And they almost certainly uncovered them because they had witness testimony that identified exactly what was there and where it was. So the reason they had to go forward with the search warrant rather than a subpoena or a simple request is because they had evidence that Donald Trump or others were either concealing these documents, uh, potentially would destroy these documents, uh, or otherwise may have been obstructing this investigation. Paul, my question is, if these are sort of archival documents, uh, things that Trump was still holding on to, what potentially could he be doing with this? Look, when we think of, of White House archives, that could be anything from who visited the White House. It could be important secret information that they're selling to foreign leaders. What on earth could Trump actually be doing with documentation that he took with him from the White House? I think that's something that a lot of the public would be curious about. Nothing legitimate, Jason. A classified <laughs> documents case can be really serious if materials implicate national security or if Trump was holding on to sensitive information that he might use to, to share with foreign governments or to bribe or embarrass his political opponents. Uh, but still, withholding classified documents is not punished as severely as felonies like sedition or obstruction of Congress, which other grand juries are reportedly investigating Trump for. But as you pointed out, if the agents who executed this search warrant come across other incriminating evidence relating to those crimes, they are allowed to seize that evidence. So this search warrant is kind of a twofer. Professor Levinson, you know, what we've seen here from the uh, former, press, uh, former member of the Trump administration, it's quoted as saying, Sarah Imger is saying, look, just a reminder, Trump has a copy of the warrant, which will include what they searched for and what crimes they believe were broken. He can release that whenever he wants. This is really important because this is somebody who was a part of his administration. What would be the value of Donald Trump sharing with the public, hey, look, this is what the warrant said, this is the information, and why might he not have released that yesterday when he had the opportunity but still released a statement complaining? Well, I think the value for him is low because he's claiming that this is a political witch hunt when, in fact, what we're witnessing is really just legal proceedings. We're just seeing the legal process play out. So I think there's very little value to him because, as you laid out so clearly, what we have here is a member of federal law enforcement, the Department of Justice, swearing under oath a federal crime was committed. There's probable cause of that. There's probable cause that evidence of that crime is at Mar-a-Lago. And then independently, a federal judge, a magistrate judge saying, yes, I agree with you, go ahead. And so I think it would hurt President Trump's narrative then if he gives us, if he shows us the search warrant, I have a strong suspicion that that would show that there was, in fact, very specific reasons that the FBI had to go in. As you just had a discussion if they were willing to provide this information, then you don't have to execute a search warrant. And so there's really no win for the former president. I think there's a win for the public. But right. if you want to peddle the, I think, false narrative that this is just a political witch hunt, then you don't provide that search warrant. Let's bring in Mark Caputo, senior in D.C. now. You know, we, the White House has said, hey, we had no idea. We have Ron DeSantis saying, oh, my goodness, that's terrible. But... In Washington, D.C., there have to be Democrats who are either privately cheering or at least publicly saying we're happy that something is happening. What's sort of the national fervor in the Democratic Party when it comes to this raid investigation? What you're not hearing publicly from Democrats is that they don't want to be gloating about this, but it's a good day for them. The reality is, is President Obama, now while Republicans don't like it, or pardon me, President Biden, while Republicans don't like it, has just completed uh, signing or have just completed a good stretch of signing legislation he's pushed for. 
And on the day after he gets his big legislative agenda accomplished, the former president winds up having the FBI search his estate in a criminal case. This is the contrast that President Biden would like to run against. There is this belief among some in Trump world that, oh, and you see it on Twitter, oh, Joe Biden is scared of facing Donald Trump. It's, it's kind of the opposite. There are a lot of people in Biden's orbit and in the Democratic more broad, Party more broadly, you know, the Hill wrote a story about this, that believe, look, President Biden's best matchup is former President Trump. It's not some of the other guys like Ron DeSantis. And the reality is, perhaps paradoxically, this big FBI search of Trump's estate, of Mar-a-Lago, has had a rallying effect among Republicans around their chief, the former commander-in-chief, who is now ready, more ready and willing than, than ever to run for office again, and setting up a showdown against Joe Biden. That's the guy that Joe Biden wants to run against. So it looks like both of them are sort of hurtling toward each other. Both of them want to face each other. But as far as Democrats are concerned, Donald Trump is a much better opponent for Joe Biden than, say, Ron DeSantis.